Welcome back to my channel. Today, what we're gonna talk about is the six counter conventional mindsets of an entrepreneur. I got this idea from John Mullins who led a TEDx talk, which I will link below in the description. And he goes over these six counter conventional mindsets that entrepreneurs such as myself have that big business just does not. And so let's jump right in. Number one, the mindset is have a yes you can mentality. And so there's not many times that a client can come to me and ask Ask me, Renarda, are you and your company able to do X, Y, and Z? And that I say no. Usually it's yes, we can. Now, I will tell you, not all the time do I already have the solution in place or the product in place, but what I'm not going to do is say no. Only time I will say no is if I know it's for sure something that I absolutely cannot do. However, I'm a very resourceful person. So even if I myself am not able to do it, do I know anybody in my network that can actually do it? And if that is the case, then yes, you can is the appropriate answer because they didn't ask me, how can you get it done at that time? They just asked me, could I do it? And more than likely, my answer is going to be yes. This is actually how our CAPS program, which is a member experience concierge pharmacy program got started. We were doing adherence for a particular client and they came to me and they were like, you know what? I'm just so tired of our members having to do so much homework, uh, unable to get their meds, trying to figure all this stuff out because in, in Medicare pharmacy is just not easy. And he said, it wouldn't it be nice if there was just a concierge program that these members could participate in where somebody was doing all of that homework for them. And I was like, you know what? That makes a logical sense to me. I'm all about customer service. We already get the claims data for what rejected at the pharmacy. We already get the paid claims to know what actually paid. Seems to me all we gotta do is bounce the two together and whatever falls out as far as the things that have rejected are the ones that members are going to need help with. And so that's how our concierge pharmacy program got started. And it was literally with a yes, you can, or yes, we can mentality. Number two is actually his number six that was in the TEDx talk. And it was entrepreneurs never ask for permission. We just beg for forgiveness, okay? And so with this mindset, it's one of the reasons when I left corporate America that I started this business was because I knew I could do more outside of the walls of corporate America than I could if I was within those walls. And what I mean by that is when you're working for a corporation or a big company, you're more than likely when you're trying to be innovative or even when you're just trying to get some of the basic necessities done there's a lot of levels that you have to go through in order to get approval so sometimes it has to go through the legal department sometimes it has to go through compliance it may have to go through communications it may have to go through procurement or even all the way up to the CEO of the company to be able to get approved for the budgeting dollars and so as you can tell if you got to go through that many steps there's going to probably be a lot of no's along the way a lot of revisions along the way a lot of questions asked just so that they can get up the ladder to be able to explain it to someone so me being in a vendor space and all about innovation and how quickly I can get to market I don't necessarily have to go through all of those steps now um, be mindful when you're saying it never ask for permission you need to be able to be in the position to make educated and informed decisions, okay? Um, so you're not going out here doing things that you know are wrong. So understanding the guidance, understanding what the legal ramifications could be, and then finding that gray area, uh, and then try to operate in that space so that you can have a yes, you can mentality, and you can go ahead and get to market. And therefore, if there is something that falls out and it has to be addressed, it's not anything huge that would potentially stop the project that would have stopped it if you were in corporate America because they wanted to make sure all the I's was dotted and T's was crossed before it went to market. So I think one and two go together. One, yes, you can. And then number two, never ask for permission, just beg for forgiveness. If you kind of take those two together, you can solve problems a little bit faster and you can get to market a whole lot faster uh, than some of these big corporations and big vendors can. Another example of that is we had a client uh, that had given a particular vendor three years to develop a solution for them. And in that three years, they were not able to come to market with a viable solution. And so the client got tired of it and they came to me because they came to one of our webinars and they were like, everything that you have in your concierge pharmacy program is exactly what we've been asking this vendor for. So within eight months, we had that contract stood up on our concierge pharmacy program 
and platform and now everything is going very well so where it took somebody else three years to try and come up with something and came up with nothing it took us eight months to implement what we already had in place and then if I back up to when we originally put this thing into place we had it up and running in a uh, probably in about a year um, just because it was contracting and things of that nature but from a setup standpoint it doesn't take that long uh, it was just again trying to get through all the contracting pieces itself number three is problem first not product first and so I'm going to link a video where I talk about the business strategy revealed and it's all about how I get paid to solve problems and so when you're an entrepreneur you're always looking for opportunities you're always looking for problems not products okay so when you think of a problem first you're thinking with your end user your customer in mind what is it that that person is experiencing what is it that that pro person is having problems with that you can actually help solve when you lead with a product first mentality you're saying what can I develop and then who can I sell it to and so you need to determine who can you sell it to and then what is it that you can sell it to because they have the problem so most entrepreneurs are going to lead with a problem first not a product first mentality all right let's move on to number four so number four was uh, using cash as the lifeblood so I don't have much experience with this one the example that John gave in the TEDx talk was about Elon Musk and how he actually uh, raised all the funding for the Tesla before he actually built the Tesla and so how I can kind of relate to that is we don't have any debt so we have credit cards we pay those off every month and then whenever we bring on new clients there's an implementation fee that that is associated with it and that implementation fee is to help you with the resources and everything that you're going to need to be able to um, have your employees and resources in place now with that early on it was just me doing the work and so building up the business and putting in the capital back into the business built us up a buffer so that when it was time to bring on people we could have a couple of months of payroll saved up and so that's how only way I can see that we actually use uh, this particular principle of using the cash uh, but not necessarily having the debt so what we do is we just try and make sure that whatever we sell it does come with an implementation fee and it needs to be able to cover not only the software but also the human capital uh, to be able to get the process kicked off um, until you can actually get the payments from the sales and stuff from the clients so that is a cash as the lifeblood type mentality versus going out and getting in all this debt trying to run your business if you can go ahead and start making sales doing pre-sales uh, charging implementation fees those type things so that you can have money funnel into your company so you're not starting out on having to have debt and then you can just move forward uh, more nimble without having to have all that debt number five is beg and borrow but please do not steal I love the way he had that as a title and so beg borrow but please do not steal mainly means what is it that you can rent from somebody else or you can leverage with somebody else to help your business to grow and so this is not one that I can relate to much either or other than earlier on when it was just me we didn't have all the fancy security cyber security things in place so whenever we got our first contract I actually used their equipment from the client logged in through their virtual office and so it looked more like I was still an employee but I really wasn't I was a vendor um, but that was a quick way to get around me having to purchase all this office equipment all this computers get all the cybersecurity is just to bring me on as look as a look-alike to one of them and actually use their equipment their phones um, but the way you just think about it is what can you you borrow from somebody else or leverage from somebody else so, and the last one which is truly was number three was think narrow not broad and so when you're talking about this particular mindset and you're thinking narrow and not broad uh, big box companies want to think how many people can we service at once how many people can we push this product out to at once okay and whenever you're an entrepreneur we try and think because remember we're problem first not product first we try and think how narrow can we go like what is that subset of people that has a problem that we can actually solve it for now here's one thing and one way I look at this a little differently so although I do think 
it narrow when it comes to the clientele. I also think once I get in there and get my foot in the door, what other ways can I have the tentacles expand so that I can get into other areas of that business? So I start out narrow and then once I get in the door, it just makes it more broad. Uh, so our business, when we first started, it was all things managed care. So it was the commercial side and it was the government side or Medicare side. And then we realized that the Medicare part of the business was taking off a whole lot faster faster than the commercial side. So then we decided to go narrow just on the Medicare piece. And then when we got there, it was, okay, do we do software? Do we do service? Do we do both? And we were actually going to do the software as a service type deal where if you wanted to just lease our software, you could. And then you could do the full package with us where we have the resources. And now we've gone even more granular or narrow and said, you know what? We're not gonna do the software piece. We, we pride ourselves on providing good customer service service and in order to have good customer service you've got to hire the right people so software is not going to to matter much if the client can't hire the right people uh, so we're going to double down on customer service and hiring the right people and then the software piece of it is just the cherry on the top because guess what it's the thing that's going to keep us able to do our reporting be able to track everything that we do to make us more efficient uh, and more productive so that's what we're going to use our software to help us internally but we're doubling down on the people and the customer service um, aspect now just because you you think narrow and not broad as an entrepreneur it doesn't mean that you lose all your other skill sets so like when I said we were doing commercial and Medicare and then we decided just to focus on Medicare it's not that we lost all the commercial knowledge so we had a contract uh, last year during the summer where the commercial piece and knowledge came into play um, and so if I was only being narrow and just thinking I'm only going to do Medicare I may have slept on that opportunity but we didn't because we could still leverage um, non-Medicare things in order for us to do these other contracts. So you think narrow, um, and if you're a YouTuber, the same thing is calling it niching down, all right? So you pick a particular topic or a particular problem that somebody has, and that's what you're focusing on. So this is the same thing. You're thinking narrow and not broad. So hopefully these six counter conventional mindsets was helpful to you. I know I've watched that TEDx talk probably four times now. Um, I think it was very informative. And I think also as an entrepreneur, what I find interesting about it is I can relate to the steps and so it's like oh wow that is exactly how I think and it's not that you need validation as a as an entrepreneur it's just that it's nice to know that these mindsets are thought of as somebody that has an entrepreneurial spirit and that you're in the right lane uh, so if you like these type videos uh, please drop in the comments and let me know let me know which ones that you actually use already um, and maybe the ones that you don't use like myself or uh, you don't have much experience in I know at the end of the TEDx talk he asked uh, four questions and one of which was what can you teach somebody else so if you want to know more about the ones that I am very familiar with and have utilized drop it in the comments below and I can make a video to teach you more about um, problems first and not product first or uh, beg and borrow but please do not steal is not one that I do a lot on but I can do some research and and then try and find you some examples on it so if there's anything that you found helpful or want to know more about please drop in the comments below and as always i appreciate you very much for tuning in to another one of my videos